So this is a little different video than what I normally do, I understand, although I've done some product reviews before, but I wanted to share this new purchase, the VZR HDMI document camera by IPVO. So I'm getting ready to do more live streams for the Retrocombs channel, and I've done a few, and the quality has not been up to par. I've been using this Logitech camera that can't hold focus. It's blurry all the time. It, the, it washes out with color. So I decided to grab one of these after reading some uh, really good reviews on the product. So we're gonna take a look at the IPVO VZR camera and find out if it will work for you if you're hosting a YouTube live stream, a YouTube channel where you're pre-recording things, or if you're an educator looking to assist some students in a little remote learning, this might be the device for you. So I've got two items here that we'll use to check out the camera. First of all, we'll check out some documentation. This is the TI-994A Beginner's Basic Guide. We'll take a look at that with the camera to see how legible text is underneath the camera. And then I also went ahead and brought the computer itself because one of the things I'll be doing in my live stream is demonstrating how to use these retro computers. And you know, I wanna see, uh, I want people to see my fingers as I'm typing on the keyboard. So I'll use both of those as examples. But before I do, let's go ahead and unbox the VZR HDMI document camera. As you can see, it comes in a pretty standard, just brown cardboard box, nothing fancy outside. Let's go ahead and turn it around here and look around the box a little bit and see what we have. We have the specifications on this side. Again, it is an HDMI capable as well as USB. Here's an image. This is a line drawing of what the IPVO looks like on that end. On this end, we have another line drawing of the IPVO. They really like their line drawings on their cardboard boxes. Let's open this up right here and see what's on the inside. If we look closely, it says lift here. So we want to lift on those corners, pull it right up, pull it open. We've got the nice black packaging material on the inside. Pretty basic. We've got a little cover here that covers up the stand that we will use these screws to screw that into the base of the camera, I'm sure. We have a QR code where we get more information. There is software available. I will not cover the software. I'm gonna cover the use of this device just right out of the box. This is the stand. It is hefty, weighty, and ow, dang, that hurt. That this is, uh, this is metal, this is cast metal, basically. So it's gonna give it some good weight on the bottom does come with a tool, a Phillips screwdriver to screw these in. It is USB-C, so that's a win. USB-C is what we want. That will give us 4K capability too. We need that extra bandwidth if we decided to use this in 4K. I won't be doing that today. I'll be using it in 1080p mode. Go ahead and remove some additional packaging. And here we have the camera itself in this beautiful green. Green is the only color option for this camera. If you don't like green, this is not the camera for you. Luckily, I like green. It is the color uh, for our college where I work. So uh, that's kind of an extra plus for me. On the back, you'll see some of the ports that we have, the HDMI port, we have the USB-C port, and then we have a 50 or 60 megahertz switch. Go ahead and pull the camera out. You see this arm has two uh, base or two axis points. Here's the camera itself and you see it rotates there at that angle as well. So we've got pretty good articulation in the camera arm itself. Nice little unit. Uh, it is compact enough. You could throw it in the bag if you wanted to, but probably not once we put the base on, which is what we need to do next. Let's go ahead and screw on the base. And I was right, I should have just used a regular Phillips screwdriver. Using this is horrible. Now that we have the base on, we can go ahead and stand it vertically and that looks pretty nice. It's a good, again, a good solid unit. It feels nice on the desk. Let's go ahead and pull out the USB-C cable. Let's unravel that and let's get that plugged in. I have this USB-C extension to my Mac Mini, so I'm gonna go plug that right in. It should be recognized right out of the box. No drivers required, at least on my Mac, is my understanding. And then you can see on the other side again, 
Here are those labels for each of the buttons. The buttons are really high quality. They do not feel cheap at all. Turned it on, you can see the light there, that green light gives us power. You can turn this camera on and off while it is connected, which is actually a nice feature if you did want to turn it off for some reason uh, in the middle of recording. And you can see we can just swing that arm down and we have a nice compact vertical unit ready for recording. Before we actually use the examples though, we're gonna turn the camera on and use the camera to check out the camera itself. A little meta camera work here. Let's see how this goes. So I'm gonna turn on the switch. There we go. And you can see my finger underneath the camera right there. Now, if I move this out, now you're gonna see a lot of my studio area, my desk area as I zoom out. But you can see even with the camera itself, I can show you bits and pieces of the camera because this arm is really got a couple of different axes of movement on it, which is kind of sweet. Uh, now I can't do the entire camera, but you can see we can get quite a bit of it if I just tune it down here. So right here is a great camera view of the camera that I can share the features. So this right here is the light and you can turn the light on and on. You see that that just happened right there. This is the filter. Now all of this is, and you can't see it, but all of it is labeled over here on the side, which is what I'm using as kind of my script to read through that. So we talked about the light, here's the filter, and you'll see I can cycle through these wild filters. And, and maybe for Halloween, some of these are good. By the way, Halloween, oh, remember Halloween, that guy? Yeah, that's right. That's for Halloween right there. Uh, but you go through the filters and I'm not sure why I would ever use these, but they're kind of cool. Kind of like just playing it. Now the black and white, you've seen me on the channel do some black and white stuff. So I could see myself using that. So there we go, there's back to normal. This other one is rotate. So even from this base, I don't have to actually rotate it here. I can do some rotation with the controls using this rotate button. I really like that. Now it looks like it's only 180 degrees. I do wish it were 90 degrees, but there's a reason uh, or a usefulness to the 180 degrees. We also have this zoom. What happens if we zoom? Obviously we get closer. Now the camera built in is a 4K camera. However, the way I'm using it today is via USB-C running through OBS Studio and it's only 10, uh, 1080p right now. I have not kicked it up to full resolution because I don't do a lot of 4K work, but because I have that resolution, I can get in here pretty close and I still have really good quality on the video. But you'll start to see it start to grain up a little bit as we get closer. Now you can start to see some of that transition and that's as high as it goes. But again, you're starting to get a little grainy right there. See my hand right there? Let's go ahead and zoom back out. And I like these buttons too because the zoom in and zoom out have uh, concave and convex buttons on them so that you can kind of feel while you're recording which one of those it should be. I really like that, that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and zoom back out. Now I'm gonna do something here. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit on these other buttons we're gonna talk about just to show you how useful it can be. And notice that it is zooming in. It does have autofocus. So you can see it just autofocused on that right there. And while I had autofocus on the camera I was using, it was horrible. It could not hold a focus. This has some additional features that will help that. We do have an exposure button and we have exposure plus, expo exposure minus. If we kick up our exposure, you can see it lightens up. So if you're in a dark area, now you need to be careful with that because that's gonna grain up your video, but you can tailor it to where you want. And then we have this one right here. This is the focus or autofocus lock. So right now it's on autofocus. If I click and hold, you hear that beep, now it's locked. It will not refocus. It is locked on that focus right there, which is great because one of the things that sometimes is maddening is you've got things set up and it's focused just perfect and then you move your hand and it blows the focus. So if you know you've got a standard height level or standard focus that you always want it to be in, that auto lock Autofocus lock is very beneficial. I really like that, that's pretty cool. And then of course you click it again and it's back to autofocus. So you can see it start focusing. There's my hand, you'll see it's take a little focus, see that little wavy and then it focuses. Uh, but focus is really good, it's pretty rock solid on this. I'm pretty happy with it. And you see as I go up and down how it just, it kind of does this because it's trying to focus on my hands. So now that we've actually use the camera to kind of check the camera itself out. Let's grab a couple of the items over here uh, and let's see what text looks like under this and let's see if it can be useful in my live streams when I'm demonstrating keyboard keystrokes as a part of the live stream, which would also be useful if you are teaching IT skills 
in a distance learning or learn anywhere environment. All right, I've set up the book. Now I'm gonna get rid of this screen. Let's go to something that's gonna be a little more valuable for you. So this is the full screen and I'm trying to see if I can get the entire book in the view. And I believe I can, I can raise this up and then tilt this over and I should be able to get the whole page if I'm careful and take some time. And this is what you're gonna to have to do. You're gonna to have to figure out how to adjust this to get it just right so that you're seeing the entire page. Now I am almost at the extents. Looks like it's gonna be hard to get the whole book. Let's go a little bit higher and see what we can get here. That is it, that is as high as it will go. So if you're looking at a eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, it looks like, unless you do something like this, you're not getting it entirely in the camera. Now I could using some uh, things like an OBS, rotate this view and crop it down so it fits, but looks like it's not gonna do a very good job. Let me make sure my zoom is all the way out. Yes, it is. If I zoom in, yeah, you can see that. So just be aware that at least with this camera, you're gonna be hard pressed to get everything in the view, which is, uh, which is too bad. Now, I probably could do something more angular. This is directly over the top. If I were to say, let me move something here, move this back, the little wobble there, and then do one of these numbers, you see that I can start to get that in there, but then I'm gonna get this weird parallax. See that? However, I am getting everything, so that's not bad. You're also starting to pick up my camera or my uh, microphone over here too, so I would need to move that out, which makes the voice all. So I'm just gonna put that back in play here. And let's do this. You know what, that's not horrible. And given the constraints of the desk I'm in, uh, that's really just not that bad. Now, if I were to zoom in, you can see that I can see text pretty well, even with a zooming in. Now that's with digital zoom, right? Um, and so if I digital zoom in again, again, pretty good. Now that is never gonna be as good as this though. It's never gonna be as good as me doing this and this, but then that's, you know, that's a manual move. So you're gonna have to figure that out and you see the focus. There's an example of focusing on text and what a book and what text look like. Now, some of the things I read in the review is that they didn't like how the text looked. I think it looks fine. I don't see any problem with this text. And if I'm doing a live stream and wanna you know, read through now, look at the screen and check what you've typed, you can see that on the other end. I can, of course, zoom in even on that. And I could even highlight this little area right here. TI Basic is ready print. This is a message. So if I were going to show coding with my fingers, that would work for me. That's one example of using the book. Why don't we take a look at the keyboard? Now, this is a big computer. Um, this is going to be a little challenging, but I wanted you to see what it takes for me to get this set up. And of course, I've got my microphone here. Now, again, everybody's situation is going to be different. And I don't want to move the microphone because I'm trying to keep some consistent audio. But if I had that microphone up here, I'd have more space. But what I want to do, and you can barely see it here, is I want to show this entire computer. Let's see if we can get that in view. That's not bad. Now, if I come up to here and tilt down a little bit, that's really all I can get right there. And you can see there's a lot of computer left. So I'm gonna be hard pressed to show the entire computer. Um, now I can probably, if I, again, move some stuff on my desk, let me just get rid of something here and move this device and let's push this thing way back here. There's that little wobble again, right there. I'm still hard pressed to get that entire, I'm gonna have to move that way back on my desk. Let's see, maybe I can come up here, okay? And you can see it's still probably not the best in the world uh, for that. Now, I, I could try and move it to the front, but if I move to the front, then it's in front of my face. So one of the things I do appreciate about the other type of camera I've been using is I have a lot more flexibility, but I think I can work through this. Here's why. Because what I want to do for my presentations is bring this down to a point where I am just over the keyboard. So let me move a few things here and let's keep working this out. One of the things you have is kind of parallax error, but you can correct that with this because I can pull this down at an angle, pull this under, and I can start to clean that up a little bit. Now, if I'm demoing keystrokes, I can do that. So I can be talking here, 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 
talking there, and then I can be demonstrating here. Now, I do have also other screens set up where I have the keyboard in one view, and then I have what's on the computer in another view, and that would be really handy. But the point is, this camera is seems to be working now. I am noticing that as I move, I'm getting some really different focusing. So this may be a situation where I want to take that autofocus, get it where I want it, lock it in, and then see, it'll always be perfect for that entire video. So that is a really nice feature. Now, again, I do have a little light. If I need a little light, I can lighten that up a little bit. It's kind of a bluish light. I'm not sure I'm gonna use it. It seems like the camera really does well with lighting, and I have my own lights that I can brighten that up with. See so yeah, how I'm moving that over? So I probably would use that, but I could see where maybe you're in a situation you just need to brighten it up, something up for just a little bit, you might use that. So that's pretty, pretty nice there. Now, I did play around with another option. I've moved it, uh, over to the side over here instead of up here. And uh, I've also blown up the screen for you so you can see it. So that's not too bad either. That's a, a pretty good situation. The problem is you can't rotate it this way, but it is at least another option. Again, you have that opportunity because you can do these wild things with this arm, right? And I'm gonna make y'all dizzy now. Uh, and then of course I can rotate it this way uh, as well. So you do have a lot of different options because of the various axes points. You even have this option right here that they tout, hey, you can actually use it as a regular video camera. Uh, and uh, the light's on, let me turn that off because it's, it's killing me. And I'm upside down, so that's where this rotate's gonna come into play. And so they, they even mention in the documentation that you can, of course, use it as a regular webcam. Now it's okay, it's not bad. Um, yeah, so in a pinch, if you were writing something down here and then just wanted to look up, you could do that. They do talk about its autofocus being able to capture you where you go, kind of get a sense of where my studio is and where I'm recording from, but you can also get unusually and uncomfortably close, right? So that's not good. So I was able to move it around a little bit and get the entire computer in the view. So that's not bad. And if I wanted to, I could turn it in this direction. If I wanted to point out the features of this particular computer, I could talk about the keyboard, I could talk about the on off switch, we could plug in some cartridges. So uh, after a little working with it, there is a little more flexibility than I thought there was. And how I did this is I really pushed the camera way back this way and then tilted the head up to get that. So that's not a bad view. You could, you could do some, um, some presentations on the hardware. It's not gonna be perfect for typing, but we could do something like this, set it up, take our little rotate, do that. Now it's kind of a weird kind of orientation, uh, but at least you could kind of point to the areas and maybe push this up here. Um, so you've got a lot of different ways you can figure out how to use this camera. I think the point is it's got enough articulating points on it and movement points that you can do some pretty interesting things with it and get most of the views that you want as long as the object isn't too big. So I know what you're probably thinking, man, that thing's pretty pricey at about 200 bucks. Yeah, there it is pretty pricey for 200 bucks and there are cheaper versions um, and I'm just sitting here playing it. But the one thing that I liked about this version is that it includes the controls. Uh, some of the other versions of this camera probably have the same camera but doesn't include these controls. So what I, what I say it's worth the $200 depends on what you're doing. If you can get a school to purchase this for you, it's definitely worth it. I think you can easily justify this as a purchase you need for your distance education classroom. If you're a guy who dabbles in YouTube videos like me, uh, yeah, it's probably gonna save you some time. It's probably going to up the quality of your video. I'm already seeing that the quality of my video is gonna be upgraded significantly. Can't wait to use it for my first live stream. If you just are looking for a camera in the cheapest possible way, you don't want this camera. You can probably find an auto-focusing camera that you can set on a tripod, set that up in a way. As a matter of fact, this is what I was using before. It's just a camera, it's on a telescoping pole, I can move it around, I can move it on the desk, but this camera, it loses autofocus. But if you can find you a good camera that holds autofocus, uh, you could easily set this up like I have and clip it to your desk and that will work for a lot less money. But I just wanted that option for those controls to zoom in, get a little extra light if you need it. 
the not that I would ever use them, but uh, you know, admittedly the filters are kind of cool too. So there you go. There are the features of the IPVO VZR. It's a, it's a pretty slick little device, good quality. I do like the features. One of the other things that I really like about it is its base. This thing is heavy and you don't have to worry about it sliding around on your table. Look forward to using this on a future live stream. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, like, hit subscribe, and hey, you can support the channel down below if you found this of value to you. All the links you need for this device are down in the video description below. So if you wanna purchase one, if you want some more information, check out the companion blog post, that's down there as well. And uh, so I'll put this away for now and get back to my retro computing content. So if you're interested in that content, again, be sure to hit subscribe, check out some of my other stuff on the Mega 65, which by the way, last week was really exciting for Mega 65 users because there were 1400 of those available. I think they're probably all gone now. I was able to snag one of the first 400, so should be receiving my Mega 65, hopefully sometime in December, early January, and I'll be talking more about that device. So that concludes my look at the IPVO VZR HDMI document camera. One thing I didn't mention is I have this connected via USB. There is an HDMI port on the back where you can plug that in via HDMI directly to a monitor or to a TV if you want to just display the camera. Now you won't be recording, you'll only be displaying, but that is an opportunity for a general regular classroom. If you have a big screen, you can project it up on that monitor or using an LCD or laser projector, that would be an option. Hopefully you enjoyed this little change in my normal content. Again, it's not gonna be for everybody, that watches the channel, but it might be for some of you. And there's probably some other folks that are gonna see, uh, do a search for this camera, hopefully see this video and see someone who's using it in a couple of different ways. But primarily for me, it'll be for the YouTube channel. So thank you for watching. And if you have questions at all about the IPVO camera, everything's down in the video description below, including the link where you can get yours. And hopefully you, uh, if you have any questions, you'll hopefully you'll post those down below as well. So Retrocombs out.